I have nearly 2,000 in-game hours playing Planet Zoo. I do consider myself somewhat of um, an advanced slash expert builder in Planet Zoo. So I want to share my top tips with you to help you become an expert builder or at least more advanced than you are now. The first tip is something what I'm always going to say in pretty much every video of mine. So if you watch my videos, you've probably heard me say this. And that is rock and foliage work. Rock and foliage work really bring anything in Planet Zoo come together, especially habitats. You're probably quite adept at building uh, rock work and placing foliage. But there's some little tips which will help you increase your rock and foliage game. Now, for example, we've got a habitat here. I've not added the main body of rock and foliage work. The body of water is in there. I could simply paint this um, terrain with the terrain brush. Any colour I want, rock would probably work for it as well. But why put rock um, paintbrush on when I can actually add rocks and foliage as well? So let's do that now, shall we? And there we go, as you can see, it makes an absolutely massive difference. Now, let's have a closer look to see what I've actually done. You can see here quite clearly, I've placed different coloured rocks. This gives it a more natural and more realistic environment. You can see that I've also got foliage, reeds and this grass piece here. Um, let's just have a quick look at what this grass piece is called because it's so versatile. It's the Drin Grass Large. There's obviously different um, large, medium and small variants as well. But I use this quite a lot. And what I do is I just poke it through the rocks. Again, it just adds to realism. And you can pretty much use this grass and these rocks. These rocks are out of the aquatic pack, I believe. Yeah, aquatic forks rock. These are recolorable. You can recolor these to any color to match the color scheme that you're going with place these in the ground and they kind of look like pebbled rocks add this grass with them and boom you've got some natural looking foliage going on and kind of taking that to the extreme a little bit you can see i've done the same here recolored the um, pebble rocks to the same color as the rocks what we get in game and i've just like lowered and height lowered <laughs> lowered and heightened lowered and raised some of the rocks as well just to give a bit of depth again so this water fountain slash stream looks like it's actually going into a body of water as well Tip number two is creating underwater viewing areas. You can see a lovely underwater viewing area I've created myself here. Again, I've created and thrown loads of foliage in, which brings us back to our last point. But yeah, creating underwater viewing areas really does make habitat stand out. And can you imagine actually being in real life viewing this kind of view underwater at any aquatic animal? It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? A bit like an aquarium. And you can easily do this. So I'm just going to jump in and I'm going to show you how to create something what resembles what you're seeing now. First thing we need to do is select the glass barrier. Now, once we've selected the glass barrier, you can create pretty much any kind of shape. But I like going with a circular shape. We'll go on six meter length like this. And then I like to create a little circle. So we'll put an angle snap on. We'll turn it in one and again and again and again and again and we'll do one more we'll go to the other side one and again and again and again and again and again so now you can see we've got a lovely little half circle let's raise this a bit higher so we'll click on here we'll raise it to four meters and now we need to do the same with terrain now bear with me just delete this one here delete the end one get the terrain and we're going to raise it just above the actual line of the top of the glass barrier just like that now we've got and go on flatten terrain we're going to lower it down a little bit i'm just going to flatten it out to the edge like so you can see the barrier is underneath there and then we're going to go across ignore these notifications it's because of my other habitat and then you can create any shape you want basically let's create a body of um, earth we need to smooth this over here 
so our animals can actually get in to the water itself and then we're going to go back on barriers we're going to select the glass barrier again and then we're going to come in one like that so it's underneath the um, body of land that we have created and then what we're going to do is so we need a slope at the back as well and that's where our animals will be able to get up onto the to the height bit of this now you can see it's just poking through there a little bit we don't want that we want it to be hidden so let's go back on this let's change that raise it a little bit see if it does this this right this is good this has happened because i can show you if it do, does this this is why you need to delete this barrier here right and then we'll go back on it now it lets you do it flatten it all out again you can see here at the back of here it's done it again so delete that back on the terrain tool flatten it all out again it's just patience and perseverance I say it all the time i say it all the time bring that back in there bring that back in there go on uh, water and then we just want to add the water play about with it a little bit but yeah you can and then you just add your path and as you can see this is how you would create an underwater viewing area you can just smooth that down change it to sand i always seem to change sand i don't know why add some rock works along the edge obviously decorate your window and we'll go back over here and oh we've got a lot of guests in but yeah this is how it can come out looking just like this you can see i've got the slope at the back here and the little indoor area where our um our animals can be put i think we've got the platypuses actually in here crawling about oh they've got an outside area as well here but yeah, this is something what you can create by creating underwater viewing areas. And at tip number three, we've got everything to do about domes. As you can see from this creation here, there's a lot of them. <laughs> so let's have a quick look around. If you if you follow my channel already, by the way, if you're not following my channel, then hit that subscribe button. If you're liking the content, you might as well drop a like while you're there. But yeah, if you've not followed the channel, this is something I created and yeah, tip number three is all about dorms. It's an advanced building technique. Well, I think it is because it can be quite tricky, but you can pull off um, structures like this and any other kind of structure, what you would put a dorm roof on or um, maybe a church spire or something like this. This is the kind of stuff you can create. So this is obviously an, an Ara Arabic or an Arabian, Arabian, that's the word, Arabian style palace. And yeah, this is the domes. I'm actually, I've got individual ones at different sizes, as you can see here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this dome here and we're going to move it over just so we can inspect it and I can just show you around. Now we're going to delete the top See, these are all individual pieces. These are a lot of pieces what go into this. So if you've not got the most powerful PC, you might struggle, just might. So we're going to delete this, these top pieces here, what we created the actual spire with. And this is what, this is basically, you can, right, listen, you can create a dome with any small pieces within Planet Zoo. But this tile piece here, this North African ceramic tiles, work really well and there's three different sizes as well and look how beautiful they are and they're recolorable and i'm just going to jump in now to show you how you go about creating something like this and it's all about rotating and moving rotating and moving you place one like that straight up vertically and then we want angle snap on you don't have to have angle snap on it depends how your door you want your dome to look just play about with it so I'm going to have angle snap on for this instance in this demonstration. And then we just want to align it up like this. And basically, this is what we want to keep on doing. Now I'm going to go 30 degrees this time. So turn it twice. Line it up. Turn it twice. Line it up. And you want to carry on doing this and trying to picture it in your head at the same time so you get a nice circular dome so let's do all this and speed it up a little bit shall we 
and then I'll come back when one side is done and then show you what to do. And there we go, we have got one side complete. And once you've got one side complete, you have got all sides complete. What do I mean by this? All we have to do is duplicate that over. Rotate it around so it's facing it. And you can see now how it can start to take shape. And then we want to, du I mean, not duplicate. So we need to group these two together just like so. And then we need to, um, not duplicate, we need to add them to the same group, sorry, then duplicate and then rotate. We'll do this one first, this one, this one, and then again we do the same. Select them all, group them together, duplicate that, and just keep rotating like that. And then you'll see there's little gaps, so you want to change angle snap off, and then you just want to fill the gaps. The easiest way is to do exactly what we've just been doing. Group it all together, merge scenery pieces, and then advance duplicate and turn them just like so. And then we group them all together once again for the last time. Raise it up and there you go. You've got yourself a dome. You can add any top you want to do. I'll just show you some examples. We added some tops from the, um, what's this actually? The in, the Indian um, section of the construction tab. And then we've, same with them. And then down here, these are actually the new European pieces, I believe. Yep, European mooring post fit cap. So yeah, that's how you would create a dome. All right, tip number four, and kind of like a follow-on from um, domes, is circular buildings and circular structures. Planet Zoo has a lot of on the grid pieces and it's quite easy to create something what's quite square but circular buildings are a little bit more difficult but they really do stand out here we have got a coliseum which i created myself by the way anything in this video and anything in all my videos you can get in your own zoo you just need to click on the workshop link in the description but yeah, I've created this myself and um, yeah, I've got a little slogan here. Are you not entertained? I'd take, I took a lot of um, reference images from Gladiator the film, hence why it says Gladiator down here. But yeah, let's talk about circular buildings. I love creating circular buildings in Planet Zoo because they always look amazing. And not a lot of people do them because they can be quite tricky. As you can see, there's a quite a lot of pieces what go into building something like this. But it does look quite magnificent, if I do say so myself. But creating circular buildings does not need to be difficult. All you have to do is create one panel. What do I mean by that? It's quite similar to the last technique with the domes. You see here, I've got two panels, but obviously this started off as one panel. So let's go in this and we'll just delete this for now. And we'll have a look at this, what I've created. You want to create one side of the circle. So whatever you want. In this instance, I'm creating a Colosseum. So all the pieces are kind of like taken from reference images from Google of Colosseums. We've got even the inside pieces as well. So that's what you want to do. And you want to create the outside pieces as well while you do this. And then just have a think how you want the the circle to look so if you want to circle to look the same all the way around then it's very simple creating different walls in the circle can be a little bit more difficult so bear that in mind now what do we do when we've created one panel what we want to do is we want to go in this we want to go and edit we want to select all of this and we want to duplicate it over rotate it all the way around sorry my angle wants to snap on in so make sure your angle snap is in on here there we go rotate it so it's facing it like this now you can see this is not level so to get it level we'll select it again and we'll go over and then we want to click sorry we'll select it we'll advance duplicate and then you see this button here toggle from relative world axis we need to click 
on that and make sure it's nice and level. We'll rotate it round. And now if we go back in, it should be, as you can see, nice and level. So there we've got, we've got two sides and now creating a circle is very easy. You've probably all created circles. So let's just go into this and then boom, all we have to do is carry on rotating it around and placing it just like so. If you see gaps like this, that means you've got the two wall pieces on each side too close together. So make them go out. But a very easy trick to do this is the mud column. Now, this is one of my favorite pieces. So we'll go on here and this is the mud column. Now, this is a grid piece, but it helps you measure stuff. So you know that every grid is four meters. So it kind of acts as a ruler. So if I put something here, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know that them are equal distance to each other. Now, if I get any object, say I want to make a wall out of this metal piece here, don't know why you would want to, but let's go with that. And we put on position snap, it will snap to the middle of that. We'll do the same on the other side, and it will snap to the middle of that. You can delete these and all you have to do is duplicate that round like that all the way and you've got yourself another circular building. The mud piece is so versatile and I just love how useful this mud column is. I'm not going to go into how to make circular paths. You should all already know how to do this. This is an advanced building techniques video after all. If you don't know how to make circular paths, I have got a video on my channel. So try to have a look at that. It might be a bit difficult because it's a bit of an old video. Anyway, let's get into the last tip. My last tip is customization. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean creating custom things in Planet Zoo. Don't be using blueprints, don't be using actual walls themselves. If you create custom walls, custom paths, and create your own things, everything will look better, I promise. We've got Santa's Grotto here, and it's created with a lot of custom pieces. So let's go into this and I'll just show you. Again, I've created this, so credits to myself. But you can see this is a custom wall. Look. All these are individual pieces and I've tinted them different colours so it looks a bit like it has sun damage. These, custom path, these are the temple pieces and just recolored. Got a little snowman there. Custom fences here with individual pieces and some light thrown in and everything is custom. We've got a little sleigh which was very difficult to make but here we've got a custom chimney. If something's not in the game what you don't want, make it. That's the, that's the really good thing about planet zoo you can do that you can create custom things like this and make everything look pretty good and i'm going to show you a little easy way how to go about this and the easiest way to create custom things especially in this instance i'm going to show you how to create a custom wall is placing a normal wall first so you've got the size requirement you know where you want your custom pieces to go now in this instance of the grotto, I've got the Planet Zoo thick painted pieces. So let's just duplicate that over for now. We want to make sure that a line to, a line to surface is on. So it goes onto the wall piece, right? And then what we want to do is we want to start creating a custom wall. So we want to place this down here. You can leave a gap as well to give a little bit more of a rustic look. And we just want to place these items. Remember, you can use any items you want, any textures you want, and any kind of, um, well, any, basically anything you can think of to create your own custom walls. So we've got these pieces here. So let's select all of them now. We'll group them, duplicate them down, line them up. And now all we need to do is select all these and group them together. So you want to group them together with the current wall, which is on the grid. Very important. And now you want to go into that group. Once you're into that group, you want to hold control and select the whole of that. Now, when you duplicate this, it will bring the grid piece as well as your custom wall pieces, making it very much easier to duplicate. 
Look how easy that is than duplicating it over. There you go. You've got custom walls. All you have to do then is go into the group, delete these actual walls itself. And there you go. There is your custom walls. And that is exactly how I created this kind of look on the grotto. And I'm going to leave that video here. I hope these kind of like advanced um, tricks and tips I've tried to teach you in this video will somewhat help you. If they did, then hit that like button. If you're new around here, then hit subscribe. My name's Adam. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will catch you in the next Planet 2 video.